propose that you travel with me to meet the countries of the European Union and the citizens who make them happy. Ready for one of our destinations? Okay, let's go! Slovenia is an independent country since 1991, with Ljubljana as its capital. Slovenia is a country in Central Europe, bordering Austria, Italy, Hungary and Croatia. The official language, Slovene, is a Slavic language. With a population of just over 2 million in 2021, Slovenia is the sixth least populated country in the European Union first state of the former Yugoslavia to join the European Union in 2004, Slovenia has pursued a policy of integration by joining the Eurozone and the Schengen area in 2007. Slovenia is a pretty young country, we just had our 30th birthday and during history we were a lot under influence of other bigger countries. The nature of Slovene people is that we've throughout history always been um, not really repressed but un un under other countries like a part of other ter territories. Uh, and that's why I think we need to develop our self-confidence, our, our belief in ourselves uh, and to not feel inferior by other bigger countries. It's a kind of um, a fear of yeah, standing out, of being exposed, of, of being not ridiculed or, or you know, make, made fun of. Again, here, the mentality is whatever is outside, like f foreign countries, is better. Like in, in, the f in, in the sense of how much you get paid and the living standard and how, how you, they support you if you have a family and so forth. How, how easy it is to start a business or to move. Slovenia is a parliamentary democratic republic. Between the 12th century and 1918, the territory was under Habsburg rule, within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. After the First World War, Slovenia became part of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, which took the name of Yugoslavia in 1929. In 1945, Slovenia joined the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, a communist regime. At the end of the 1980s, Serbia wanted to establish its economic and cultural hegemony over the other Yugoslav republics. This phenomenon began to worry Slovenia and Croatia. In 1990, after the fall of the USSR, the Slovenian's electorate voted 90% in favor of the independence. A 10-day war against Serbia then took place and led the Slovenian's independence in 1991. Relations between the countries of the former Yugoslavia are complex, but Slovenia has largely normalized its relations with the other republics of the former Yugoslavia. Slovenia and Croatia, for example, have stable democratic relations, despite some conflicts over their borders. With its entry into the European Union, Slovenia has renewed diplomatic relations with Serbia too. Uh, I think the main, the main thing about Slovenia is at the moment it was part of Yugoslavia, which was in Balkans, and I think it really brings people together, uh, which is really cool because you can be really good friends, although someone is Serbian and Bosnian, uh, which I really, really like. Um, on the other hand, it also has some hate relationship because of the war, so it's kind of ugly, so we are trying to surpass this. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I think, yeah, I think the war is the which was 10 days war, but still it was quite impactful, I think, in general for all Balkan countries. Also, I think that Josip Broz Tito had a huge impact on our Slovenians, uh, because um, and in Yugoslavia, I think that people 
they were so connected with other nature uh, nations um, I think that because of the sayings of our grandparents and parents that lived in Yugoslavia they have such good memories of Yugoslavia that I think that we the young generation also wanted wants to experience this on some way and yeah I really think that sometimes it would be better <laughs> if, if we were we lived in Yugoslavia still not everyone is uh, has this opinion uh, just certain people you know have this opinion not everyone yeah some people are happy that we are independent country among young people like uh, around 30 or plus minus five years I don't think we miss Yugoslavia so much because we don't know how it was at that time and we just want to focus on the future so yes uh, I guess some people do miss ex-Yugoslavia but I think that are more older people like our parents or our grandparents uh, they have experienced how uh, was life in ex-Yugoslavia and I guess they look now at young people, at situation, political situation, financial situation, social situation and they think that life was better then because they had I guess more stable life in that way uh, maybe the wages um, maybe they could uh, build houses, buy apartments and stuff like that and now that's a difficult thing for young people in um, Ljubljana the rents are very high the government should make some apartments which uh, would be affordable for young people. If you want to have an apartment currently in Ljubljana, which is the capital of Slovenia, it will cost quite a lot. It's like Vienna, something like that, which is an enormous amount for someone who has minimal wage of less than 1,000, or I think it's 1,000 now, euros per month, netto, which is nothing comparing to here, but the prices are still the same to see from a, like, a tourism perspective is that, um, especially Ljubljana, that it wouldn't be so tourist oriented. That it's like the city has lost a lot of its charm because um, everything is geared towards tourists, actually. And it's like there used to be a super nice, chill out, funky vibe in the city and it's now losing that charm because like there are more tourists than there are locals they're like, the prices are super ramped up and things like that. At this time, we don't have the best health system. You have to wait a lot of time to get to some uh, specific doctor. Uh, so yeah, at uh, this time, the, the situation is not the best. I hope it will change. We Slovenians, I don't know, we always complain that something is, isn't so good, but it actually in in comparison uh, comparison to other countries it's great you know I mean we have a good health insurance mm -hmm. uh, that in a, lot, in a lot of countries they don't have social system so you pay each month obviously but you also don't pay if you have some surgeries for example which is quite good compared to I don't know USA and we have free schooling and this is also very good. Intra-European Union trade accounts for 67% of Slovenians' exports and 59% of Slovenians' imports. Its main trade partners are Germany, Austria and Italy. Slovenia is the 15th country in the European Union with the highest GDP in PPC. In 2022, Slovenians' public debt was 69.9% of GDP compared to a European Union average of 84%. In Slovenia, the European Union is funding projects such as infrastructure renovation, environmental pollution control and the development of rail transport. So what is the opinion of our interviewees regarding the European Union? Um, I think that people don't understand enough European Union. If, from my point of view, I can say European Union was good in terms that it financed some projects which 
um, which brought people from different countries together. I haven't given it thought at all, but like from a practical standpoint, as in being able to travel and being able to trade and do business with the rest of Europe, I like it a lot. Because I know of a lot of, I have friends from the UK that have a lot of trouble now, that, you know, they were living in the EU, but then the Brexit happened and now it's like a whole lot of trouble to getting residency here. Um, and on the other hand, you have like countries losing their own authenticity, I feel. So we, we came into the EU, I think, when 2004 or something like that. And like since then, like all the prices and everything went up. And it's the same story with like most countries I hear of that joined the European Union, that lose their own currency. And like the standard of living is on paper, it's better. Like, oh, we're building highways and get, getting subsidies from the EU. But um, like here, for instance, I remember when I was a kid, like, I don't know, a scoop of ice cream used to be something equivalent to 20 cents euro. And now it, like the same scoop cost, I don't know, up to a euro 80, like two euros, 250, which is like, you know, yeah, it's a difference. I'm, I have mixed opinions, like super biased. Uh, <laughs> so I think that that we are in European uh, Union, I think that this is something great because we can develop uh, together with it and we also get a lot of help from it and I don't know, it gives us also some of opportunities like Erasmus. Yeah, I think it's great too, especially for the young people Erasmus yeah, Man, because yes. we're a small country and we don't have a lot of name in the world so yes. yeah it helps us grow economically also Adio. 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 Adio.